Hey, what's up guys, welcome to Training Reviews. So recently I just bought the 16 inch MacBook Pro and I maxed out the specs on it. This model here has the new AMD Radeon Pro 5600M HBM2 graphics card, which just came out a couple of weeks ago. It's the fastest graphics card that you can buy in any MacBook right now. And I did max out some of the other specs as well in terms of the processor and the memory as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the comparisons between the previous high-end uh, graphics card that you could have bought for the MacBook Pro, which was the AMD Radeon Pro 5500 DDR6 model, which now is actually the mid-range graphics card that you can buy for a MacBook Pro, and it's been replaced with this 5600M AMD Radeon Pro uh, HBM2 model. Now the HBM2 is the high bandwidth memory version two, generation two, whatever you like to call it. So it's super fast, and I'm gonna show you the differences if you're looking to buy a MacBook Pro, if you should get the 5500M, 8 gigabyte DDR6 version of the graphics card or this brand new HBM2 graphics card which is a lot more expensive. So let's look at the differences. All right, so starting off with the pricing. Now this is going to be one of the biggest deciding factors if you're going to buy the mid-range model graphics card or this one, the HBM2 high-end graphics card. Now, if you go for the base model of the 16 inch MacBook Pro and you wanna add the HBM2 graphics card, which is the highest one you can get, then you'll have to dish out an additional 800 pounds. But if you're gonna do this on the top spec MacBook Pro, which is like the one I've bought here, then you'd have to pay an additional 700 pounds for that as well. So just to be aware, it's not cheap. That is a massive upgrade compared to like 100 and 200 pound differences for the 5500 upgrade from the very base model graphics card, which is the four gigabyte versions of the AMD Radeon Pro 5500. So depending on how much budget you have, that is a very expensive upgrade to the highest spec model. So in this video, hopefully I'll give you a better idea if it's worth paying all of that additional money for that graphics card. So let's briefly take a look at some of the comparisons in terms of the performance metrics. So the first one is the memory bandwidth. Now this is the most simplest and most common form of performance metric when choosing the right graphics card. And essentially the memory bandwidth is the actual speed of the video RAM. So if you wanted to get something that's very fast in terms of doing high-end editing or photo applications, Adobe Suite kind of stuff, or even if you wanted to do performance gaming on there, then you'd always look at the memory bandwidth to see how much you can get. So the higher the memory bandwidth, which usually is rated in gigabytes per second, then the faster it will draw the video power and the quality of the images in the actual processing. So now let's have a look at the chart. So as you can see here, the HBM2 5600M gets up to a massive 394 gigabytes per second versus the 192 gigabytes per second that you can get for the mid-range 5500 model. Now both of these are for the eight gigabyte graphics card as well. And as you can see, it's just slightly more than double the performance. So if you are going to do it basically on the amount of power that you can get and the quality of the graphics you can get, then I think that doubling of the previous mid-range model is actually very worth paying that additional amount for. So for me, that is a massive difference when choosing the, this graphics card for your MacBook Pro. Now looking at the second metrics, this is called compute units. Now compute units are referred to blocks of processing elements that usually refer to how much power can be pulled from the GPU and how much it can actually process with that power as well. So the more compute units that you have, the more processing power and the graphics card has to perform the concurrent tasks amongst all the different multitasking options you have. Now looking at the chart here, the 5600M model gives you 40 compute units and the 5500 model gives you 24 compute units. So as you can see, it's almost double and I think that's just another really great statistics to have. So it gives you the comfortability to know that it can almost grab double the power from the GPU. So just by that statistic, I think that is really good upgrade. So if you do go for the 5600 HBM2, then just know that you can get almost double the amount of processing and power pulled from the processor itself in the graphics card to do so much multitasking and make it easier for you as well. Third but not least, I wanna talk about teraflops or T-flops for short. Now a T-flop is a direct mathematical measurement of how much a computer can perform. So specifically, it refers to the capability of a processor that calculates one trillion floating point calculations per second, uh, which actually is the abbreviation for T-flops. Now let's say for example, something has five teraflops or five T-flops, then this is basically saying that that machine has the capability of coping with five trillion calculations per second. Now, 
Think about that for a second. That's just a lot of processing in one second. Now, this metric is most commonly used in gaming consoles. This MacBook Pro, let's just take a look at the comparison chart here, has 5.4 trillion floating point calculations per second, compared to the 5500M graphics card, which gives you 40 flops. Now, in comparison to a gaming console, the Xbox Series X has 12 teraflops. So this is just under halfway from uh, achieving a gaming console capability. Now, I will be testing this completely to see how the gaming performance is on this. So that will be coming up in another video very soon. So make sure you subscribe so you won't miss that one. But just from that, I feel like it's uh, very good capabilities of enhancing so much more performance power in its gaming. Now, MacBooks in general have never been the ideal gaming medium, but I'm gonna be testing this out with games from the actual Mac App Store and also from Steam. So I'm gonna purchase like the most uh, intensive games that I can get that will really push this graphics card to its limits to test to see if there's any lag or anything like that. So from my point of view, 5.4 is amazing and that just stands out. And those are the three top metrics. But I have this chart here, take a look. This gives you all of the main differences between both of the graphics card if you'd like to see that. So do go ahead and pause the video if you just wanna take a look and read a full comparison there. Now finally, what does Apple say about the difference between upgrading to this HBM2 5600M model graphics card in real life? So let's just take a look on their site. So as you can see here, it says that if you do use Maxon Cinema 4D, then you can get up to three and a half times more faster rendering with Pro Render itself. So that's pretty cool. Now Final Cut Pro X is what I use and this is what I will be using this machine for for a lot. And this gives me 3.4 times faster timeline rendering performance. So for me, I can churn out videos very quickly compared to what I was doing before. Now, if you use something like Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve Studio, that gives you 3.4 times faster rendering. Something like Unity Edda, that's 3.2 faster demo fly-throughs. And then when it comes to gaming as well, so they did give you a couple of examples. So Total War Three Kingdoms. If you use this graphics card, you can get 3.1 times faster performance in your gaming ability. Now that is a lot compared to the previous models and the base model specifically. And something like Fortnite is 2.6 times faster performance. So if you are a big gamer and you do like to use your laptops for gaming, then I feel like this is going to be the graphics card you're going to need because very quickly, as the rate of technology advances, it may slow down quicker than you expect. So I would always go for the higher end model. In conclusion, is it worth the expensive price tag to upgrade? So for me, time will tell, but in everything that I've uh, just showcased to you, I feel like yes, it is. Depending on your actual budget, because this is a very expensive upgrade, if you do max out the processor and the memory in the actual build of the uh, Apple Store webpage, but then you decide to choose the 5500 8GB graphics card instead of the 8GB 5600M HBM2 graphics card, then I feel like that will still do a very good job because you have maxed out the processor and the memory as well. But if you are trying to leave the processor and memory at the default options, then you want to upgrade just the graphics card, then I would highly recommend you do go for this 5600M HBM2 model. So hopefully that gave you a good idea between the differences of the two graphics cards and for your purpose, whatever you may want to use it for. If you're not gonna use any high intensive uh, programs or any specific editing or gaming capabilities for your MacBook Pro, then this latest graphics card probably won't be worth that price tag to upgrade. But if you are, then I definitely think it's worth it. The next thing I'm gonna do is test this as a gaming console. Here's a quick sneak peek preview of that. All right guys, so hopefully uh, you subscribe so you won't miss the uh, gaming video coming up very soon. If it is out by the time you're watching this video in the near future, then I will have it linked in the description below as well. Otherwise, I hope you like this video. I'm gonna give you a review on this MacBook Pro in a month's time to see how it's been in my day-to-day -day usage from working from home as well, and actually just playing some games and seeing if the battery life has been reduced. So lots of cool stuff coming up in the very near future. Don't miss those ones. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.